Now this is pretty exciting, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm about to show you a laptop running the brand new Ryzen 6000 series that I've been waiting for, mobile processor with the Radeon graphics that I wanna see, a discrete GPU from AMD. And of course, this is the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 here for 2022. So this is one that I've really been anticipating getting into the studio. I went out and I bought one. It came in today and I'm ready to bring you my unboxing and first look review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by ASUS. I'm not being sponsored by ASUS. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. ASUS is not getting copy approval. That means you're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from ASUS. Now, it's available right now over at Best Buy. That's where I got it. I paid $1649.99. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can get one. Now, that unit has a 6700S GPU, but if you want the one with a little bit better graphics, get the 6800S. That's not yet available, at least not here at Best Buy right now, but that's coming very soon, and that goes for $1899.99. For those interested, again, I'll leave links in the description below. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, clever packaging here. When you open the lid, the laptop is raised to greet you. That's a really nice touch. And holding it for the first time, it feels really nice. We're gonna get to that in a moment, but let's find out what else you get inside the box. You get a 240 watt power adapter that has a barrel pin connector, and it also comes with the extension cord. And I gotta say for a 240 watt power adapter, it's not too bulky, not too big, that's pretty good. And finally, you get some documentation, which includes a setup guide and some warranty information as well. Now, holding the unit for the first time, I noticed that the weight is not too bad, especially for a gaming laptop, 1.65 kilograms or 3.64 pounds. And I gotta say the build quality is excellent on this. It feels rock solid. There's very little flex in the chassis. This is a very well-made machine. Good job on that front, Asus. And as far as the colorway is concerned, you can get it in a dark gray, which looks really nice, but I really like this white finish that we have here today. It really is a very premium feeling gaming laptop. Nice. All right, let's check out the port selection. We're gonna start off on the left side. We get your power port, an HDMI 2.0B port. Next to that is a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that is full service. That means you can do data, charge, and display out. So yes, you can charge on that port. And then next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Now moving over to the right side is a micro SD card reader, and that's new to this year's version. And then next to that is another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that supports display port out. And then you get two USB-A ports to round out the ports on this laptop. And all in all, I'd have to say that's a pretty good port selection, especially for a thin and light gaming laptop. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. And what I've noticed so far, the hinges are very sturdy with very little screen wobble. And it has an ergo lift hinge, so when you do lift the lid, it gives you a nice raised typing angle, and it certainly helps with the airflow. And the screen folds flat 180 degrees, as you see here, pretty much giving you a great viewing angle each and every time. And so far, I'm really liking the keyboard. The key travel is actually pretty decent. I'm guessing about 1.5 millimeters. And it also has pretty good tactile feedback and very comfortable to type on so far. I'm liking it. And of course, you get the RGB backlighting with a lot of user control within the settings. So if you're into that, you're going to really like what this offers. And the glass touchpad is actually really responsive. Two-finger scrolling was really smooth, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. All right, let's talk about user upgradability, and there's some good news here. Eight gigabytes of RAM is soldered into the motherboard, but there's another open SOTUM slot for another eight gigabytes, a total of 16 on my review unit, but you can go up to as much as 24. You can max out at that. And it is DDR5 RAM, and it is the faster rank eight RAM that we'd like to see. So that's been pretty good. 
Now, there are models that allow you to max out the 32. That would be where 16 are soldered in, and then an additional 16 is supported additional on top of that. And the SSD is user upgradable. It's a PCIe NVMe Gen 4 SSD. And here's the reads and writes. Now, although these are excellent reads and writes, they're not the fastest Gen 4 speeds we've been seeing. These are actually a little bit less than we normally see, even though it is Gen 4. It's got Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2. And so far, both are working really well. No issues in my initial testing. But of course, I'll give a follow-up in the upcoming full review. Okay, let's talk about the display. And so far, I am super impressed with it. It's an IPS display, 14 inches, with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. And yes, that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. That means you're going to see more on the display due to its vertical nature. And it also is a Dolby Vision display. So watching high dynamic range content is going to be great. It also has an anti-glare coating on it. So you don't get any unnecessary glare or reflections. And you get some really deep blacks, good white points, decent contrast, and it has a low Delta E score of 0.97, meaning it's a color accurate display. Remember, anything below two means it's color accurate. And we get good coverage of the color gamut. 100% sRGB, 87% Adobe RGB, 94% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 85% NTSC. So what does that really mean? Well, if you're a content creator, this is gonna be a good panel to do Lightroom, Photoshop, color grading, and of course, video editing. And it supports adaptive sync, so if you're gonna do gaming on it, it's gonna be really good. And it has a high refresh rate of 120 hertz, although it's 60 hertz out of the box. Go into the display settings, switch it to 120 hertz to get the really smooth scrolling and the very fluid gameplay. So for a gaming laptop, you definitely wanna have that high refresh rate, and it worked out really well. And it has a low response time of three milliseconds so it really checks all the boxes as far as this display is concerned when it comes to gaming and i also love the fact that this is a really bright display i measured 447 nits and considering the fact that this has an anti-glare coating on it makes it even better this is a really nice display i would say it's excellent overall so this is the front-facing camera on the asus rog zephyrus g14 all new for 2022. And yes, it does have a webcam, unlike the previous models, you do get one. Now it is a 720p webcam, 30 frames per second, and it is an IR webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, that's good. Uh, what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality for your video conferencing needs, your hybrid work needs? Uh, let me know in that comment section below. Now this has a four speaker system with smart amplifier and I would say it's okay. Not the best I've ever heard, certainly not the worst. I would say it's a middle of the road type of audio experience. I thought the volume was decent, the mids were okay, and there was a hint of bass. Now I've had this laptop only for a couple of hours so far, so I haven't really run any of the meaningful stuff yet. I need to do my long-term testing, of course, but as you can see from these initial benchmarks, the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HS is performing well. Remember, it's an eight core, 16 thread processor, and that AMD Radeon RX 6700S graphics is more of an equivalent to, I would say, an RTX 3060, whereas the RX 6800S is an equivalent to a 3070 or somewhere in between and i think the numbers so far show it very promising here in terms of that performance now the next step for me of course is to install all the games so i can bring you all the numbers the benchmarks that'll be coming in that upcoming full review so you don't want to miss that now this has a 76 watt hour battery and I'm expecting good things out of it. I'm hearing good things out of it, but of course I've only had it for a few hours. So I need to do my testing when it comes to battery life. I'll bring you those numbers in that upcoming full review. Now, a couple of observations so far about the thermals. I noticed that it runs pretty hot, especially under heavy load. I'll talk more about that in the upcoming full review. And it also has some pretty loud fan noise when it ramps up. Here, take a listen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I got a lot of testing to do ahead of me, but so far, so good, 24 hours in, very impressed with this Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 here for early 2022. The nice 
14 inch, 120 hertz. Matte display is really good. I like that high refresh rate on it. The cleaner design, the improved ergonomics. We now have a webcam. It didn't have a webcam previously. We now have one, although it is 720p, not the 1080p we'd like to see here in 2022. I like the upgradable RAM and SSD. I like the quad speakers so far, although they could be a little bit better, but I thought they were pretty decent. I've heard worse, that's for sure. And I like the excellent performance out of these Ryzen processor along with the GPU. I still have a lot more testing to do, such as the battery life, the thermals, and everything I normally bring in my full review. That's gonna be coming very soon, but I think Asus has a home run here, and I can't wait to bring you that full review. That is coming very soon. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Zephyrus G14, the ROG, of course? Uh, this is really, really clean looking. Love this white design. I love the pattern on here, and I love the build on this. It's really rock solid, tightly put together. I think they did a really nice job. Again, the white looks really good. Now, I love the fact that this has a beautiful 14-inch display, IPS display, with an anti-glare coating on it. No glare, no reflections. It's going to be great for gaming, especially because it has that high refresh rate, 120 hertz three millisecond response time. Uh, I just started to do a little bit of gaming on it so far. Numbers are looking good. Of course, I'll bring you all of that in my full review. 76 watt hour battery, looking good so far. I've only had it for about 24 hours. Haven't had to charge it yet. So that's looking good. I'll bring you those numbers as well. Now it does run kind of hot so far. I've noticed that ramps up, especially when you're intensive gaming and stuff like that. And the fans will kick in. And I showed you a little bit of an example of how loud the fans get, but not totally unexpected. This is a very thin and light gaming laptop, as I mentioned. So it is sort of expected. The efficiency is looking good. The performance is looking good. And I like the way it looks. So clean look, a nice improvement over the 2021 version. So I am impressed. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, the graphics on this have been good so far. This is the equivalent, I would say, of the RTX 3060. So that's going to give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. Again, I'll have more to say about that in the upcoming full review. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.